what's up everybody and welcome to itg daily the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news i'm drew bosley you can find me over on twitter at artistic gamer 28 and that's the one the only scott savage scott is also on twitter at <laughs> savage scott what's happening dude Oh, I'm glad you got that in the intro, man. I don't know what I'd do if you switched it up. <laughs> a whole new formula today. That's it. Uh, dude, we got a good show. Um, but you can always find our show over at InsideTheGame.ca, podcast services and TV streaming networks around the globe. Coming up on today's episode, we have the final DLC character for Smash Brothers. Oh, boy. Uh, that might be a show capped right there. We'll see. <laughs> Dude, Ubisoft announced its latest Ghost Recon game and it's free to play. And lastly, coming up will be Xbox. will bring some accessibility options to the storefront. I like that idea, dude. This is cool. Are you ready? Mm. Scott, I'm going to let you take the first one. Why don't you take it away? <laughs> this is all you because I am not a Smash Brothers player whatsoever. All right. Well, I'm going to try and just get through this without being impassioned uh, too much. <laughs> we'll save that for later. Um, but this comes from Joe Scrabbles on IGN. Um, we, oh, let's get into it. Super they, Smash yeah. Bros. had an announcement that they announced a future announcement. Well, that day was today. <laughs> And now we know who the last DLC character for Super Smash Bros. will be. And that is, regretfully, Sora of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> and, well, there's a new trailer that shows the initial Super Smash Bros. Ultimate reveal. And it shows Mario opening a portal and bringing Sora into that mashed up universe. He will be added officially on October 18th, and it's said to cost $5.99, that's US dollars, as a standalone, but he is part of a fighter's pass. So if you've got that fighter's pass, he's the next good. character. He's supposed to be the final character of yes. this Smash Bros. But I recall this being, I think, three Smash Bros. after the final Smash Bros. So we'll <laughs> see about that. But... Sakurai has been uh, giving a little bit of information away. Now, he says his controls will be pretty straightforward, but he will remain distinct from other characters. He's more of an airborne character, and he's going to be uh, quite dodgy instead of some of the heavier airborne characters we see. Now, he will use some Kingdom Hearts magic, and those will be usually damaging. There are some taunts that they've added in there, but the majority is to have Sora feel like he did in Kingdom Hearts. And that's a lot of aerial combos and that such. I, I'm quite familiar with Kingdom Hearts, sure. but uh, seeing Sora added to this game, I'm wondering, you know, it seems like just another sword fighter to me, but there's a huge fan following. He was absolutely the most requested character by far. <laughs> it's just not one you were looking forward to scott is that the thing like i've seen mixed yeah. feedback coming out of this announcement and some people are on it and then others are just not all that thrilled they're looking and hoping for somebody else right it's, yeah i personally problem. i wanted shovel knight but well, uh, yeah this is the problem though this is supposed to be the last one that anybody's gonna get for the smash brothers ultimate and there's a lot of hopes and kind of dreams building up to what it could be. And, you know, you can't always please everybody, but I know a lot of people are thrilled by this announcement. Me, like I said, right off the top, dude, I'm just not a Smash Brothers fighter. I'm more geared to the world of Mortal Kombat. That's where I kind of do my fighting <laughs> game. So complete opposites. I'm, I'm right <laughs> behind you now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. There's a dozen characters I can think of easily that I would have chosen. Uh, instead of Sora, but no one who's been nearly as well requested. Waluigi was a very close second I've heard, yeah. but that's not happening. And uh, man, I just literally any Digimon would have made me happier. Or as I put in the chat earlier, Adam Sandler <laughs> as himself, <laughs> I would have enjoyed that a little bit more. That's uh, it's, it's too bad. It's, but you know what? That's what I said. A lot of people are thrilled by the announcement. And we'll see uh, what happens. Do, do you think we'll get any more Smash characters? 
No, I th- I think this title is just about finished up. Uh, Sakurai has talked for a long time about being, you know, wanting to step out of the limelight, get out of the creation space. He wants to make new Kirby games. So I think this might be the last Smash Brothers for quite some time. Right. Oh, well, we will see. Because like you said, right, like, he hasn't wanted to actually do this game either. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Kojima, who wants to move oh, it's something very else, similar. right? Yeah, so there you go. This is it for Smash. Dude, the last character has been revealed. We'll be getting it soon, just around the corner. And uh, that will be it for that game. Maybe then after that, we can get another Mario Kart. (laughs) Yes, Double Dash (laughs) 2. It's been, what, 20 years? Come on. (laughs) Yeah, dude, uh, a little mix, like you said, mixed reaction. And that's what we seem to be getting in the world of Ubisoft as well right now as they expand into Tom Clancy Ghost Recon. With a free-to-play title, Frontline. Dude, this is... Um, yeah, well, as I said, it came real mixed. <laughs> it is basically, at its essence, a Ghost Recon Battle Royale. That I didn't is. even have to make this one. So, okay, so I watched the, the reveal, right? Congratulations to Ghost Recon and the team. 20th anniversary 20 years due to ghost That's recon awesome. and i've been there from the beginning my friend i have played them all i loved a lot of these games breakpoint is kind of one of the ones that kind of left me high and dry and hanging in there because when it oh, launched that it menu was, system man <laughs> well yeah that one just left you out to dry just locked me out. Yeah. yeah which is just bizarre um but it it had its issues at launch since then like i was just talking to steve the other day he jumped back in dude i downloaded it too you get that bug of it just there's just nothing like a ghost recon uh gunfight there's just the way the mechanics oh, yeah. feel in that game are I just it clicks with me it clicks with me a lot and i really really love that game i love wildlands wildlands was incredible and then we got into breakpoint i'm like cool now we're gonna gather resources and this yeah it didn't really <laughs> hit as well and then that's why i said there's just bug after bug after bug so it has since since been squashed those bugs and then kind of they can- added you can no longer um, enter the boss fight with John Bernthal 10 minutes into the game because I think I remember that before it locked me out. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's that. Some strangeness that was, dude, that happened in Wild Dance. My brother, I said, Yo, how do you like Wild Dance? He goes, Man, I played for an hour, I beat the end boss, and I was done. I was like, What? <laughs> what? He goes, Yep, yep. He played, he joined in on co op with his friends, and then he met the boss and beat him, and that was it. Game was over. Oh a, man, that's a hard. That's not how you're supposed to play it. No, no. I've got like a hundred hours in that game. <laughs> yeah, possibly more. I think you hundred percented that. Did you not? I was close. I was really close. Are you missing close. missing one shotgun off in the forest? Somewhere. Uh, yeah, something like that. And then you get into breakpoint, dude. As and as much as I've had issues with it, I'm a hundred hours into that game. So it's just like <laughs> I love the Ghost Recon franchise. I love the series. It's had its ups and downs. Now with the announcements of Frontline, let's get into it because Ghost Recon, Ghost Recon Frontline will be available, of course, on the Xbox family, PlayStation Five, PlayStation Four, Stadia, Luna, and Windows PC as well via the Ubisoft Connect, developed by Ubisoft Bucharest. Um, which previously worked on all the Ghost Recon games, so that's good to see that that is kind of something they have in their back catalog of you know experience, right? But the Ghost Recon Frontline yeah. offers a new and never before seen way for players to explore the Ghost Recon universe with a free to play hundred plus players PvP first person military experience. Okay, first of all, this is a free to play hundred person hundred plus person PvP mm-hmm. first person experience. Scott, that's not Ghost Recon. No, no. First person is already mixing it up. I think, I don't know if there's been a first person one since the original three. Like, we, dude, we've been playing third person for so long. And that's why this game connects so well with me because it is third person. I am a third person player. That's my main, you know, way to play games. I love playing in a stealth situation in third person perspective that allows me to be able to see my surroundings. Going into first person, Dude, and uh, can I say this? I think I can. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm on the fine line because when this airs, the review will be lifted. Okay, I'm playing Far Cry Six right now, and uh, yeah. dude, the whole game is. Well, I shouldn't say the whole game. 
most of the game is first person and oh, because it's spoilers. so fast <laughs> well i know it's just right you can only say so much when the embargo drops but yeah. uh because i'm in first person and it's quick it gives me a bit of motion sickness it's almost like being in vr in some instances oh. right and that's what i'm worried about because now ghost recon takes me out of that third person perspective puts me into a first person and it's a lot faster and you're playing pvp they also did state that you can play PVE elements. They are listening okay. to fan feedback, and that's one of the exciting things that they are doing. Is that when with Breakpoint alone, they've taken a lot of feedback and made a lot of changes. Game launch, there's no AI companions. Now you go into the game, dude, you have AI companions because the community was like, hey, Wildlands gave us our AI companions. We've been playing with our companions now for so long. Where did they go? Well, they took that yeah. out because they wanted to bring in for Breakpoint an element of survival, which I absolutely understood the direction they took. Okay, but yeah, at the same innovate somehow. Yeah, well. they do, but you feel lonely all of a sudden, and when you've been accustomed to these characters for so long, and then all of a sudden you're just on your own, right? And but a lot of people didn't like that, so they took the fan feedback, brought back our AI companions, and that's where we've been moving forward. So now when we get in here it's it's dude it's the battle royale you have objectives all of us are going for the same objective and then when it happens so okay you get three classes all right you get the assault class support class scout class from oh, there scout doesn't sound stealthy enough for me well yeah unfortunately scout, well, we'll see it says scout can easily recon the area for the squad revealing and pestering enemies from a distance without fear of retaliation Okay. 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 So I like that Ranger Marksman zone. Like, yep. that's my that's my spot for sure right, on the team. <laughs> Absolutely, I get you there, buddy. That's that's for sure. So everything takes over in a, a brand new place in Drakmore Island. Uh, it's an open world, of course, with diverse landmarks and biomes. So everything's a little bit different depending on where you land. But everybody works towards this uh, one objective, and then it kind of reminded me a lot, honestly that they pulled in elements of the division, the dark zone, because when you oh, grab your materials, yeah. you then have to go to an, ex uh, an evac place, right? Signal off your evac and then wait, do the same thing here. Exact same thing. You have to get to an extraction zone, get there, light off a flare. Now everybody knows where you are while you wait for your <laughs> evac to come in and take you out. That's going to be a frantic nightmare at that moment, but that sounds exciting, though. That's cool. uh, exactly right. So there, it does have that, the, uh, but at the same time, I'm like, man, that's. I don't know if I really want that either. I, I just, I'm, <laughs> I'm mixed, Scott. And then the. It reminds me of Scavengers, which I, I've been trying to get everybody in on. I don't think you've played specifically though. It's, I played the uh, beta a while the ago. The evac at the end, you have to yep. run to the ship. Everybody kind of either. Uh, fist bumps and gets on peacefully or if you're like me you wait for those doors to open and shoot the guy and you run in yourself <laughs> but that's kind of what I'm expecting out of this everybody combining at that one objective is going to be some frantic chaos well and, and the other side of it too Scott is where's the campaign then yeah right all of a sudden now we've just completely lost our story Frontline's been in development for three years already. They're oh, wow. Okay. Coming up. Seems... Yeah. It seems like a while, but I do. Yeah. There's, they stated also that it's still an early development. They're launching a beta for EU servers. So you have to be in over in the EU area in order to get in on the beta. So all North Americans got to sit back and wait. Apparently our beta is coming later. We'll have to see how that mm. goes. I'm sure that beta will probably be on PC. So if you're a PC player, that's great. If you're more like a console like me, you might want to wait. So there's that yeah. side of it too, right? And it's just like, man, they've really changed a lot when it comes to this Ghost Recon. And last I looked, I'm gonna take a quick look, Scott. Uh, dude, how how was your day? While I look, <laughs> <laughs> oh, not terrible. Yeah, I had to do some medical appointments and such yesterday, but today I was back to work and it was business as usual. But that's nice and comfortable for me nice it was that and well <laughs> dealing with the massive amount of messages i was getting because of sora coming to smash brothers <laughs> a lot of people curious as to what i would say what rant i would launch into but i i kept it clean dude you were the first person i went to when that announcement dropped and i was like hey <laughs> i was just going okay so here it is right now the announcement trailer okay for frontline 
on the Ubisoft North American YouTube channel. 587 likes, thumbs up. 2.6 thousand dislikes. Ooh. Right? That's not what you want to see announcing a new game. No, no. I, some of that can be explained because the last two Ghost Recons were very open, very big, explorable worlds. So I can understand if you're used to that. Sure. Um, if Assassin's Creed went the way of Battle Royale, Dude, I'd be Infinity's little... coming. Infinity's coming. <laughs> That's true, but I really hope they keep some sort of uh, NPC <laughs> oh, guys for me to hunt. But Yeah. I don't know. We, we'll see. There's still a lot going on in the world of Ghost Recon. They do. They are about to drop the Motherland DLC for Breakpoint. So that's coming with a bunch of new changes and, and adjustments and stuff like that. So that's exciting. A bunch of new, um, actually, a bunch of returning outfits that you'll be able to wear. But either way, Scott, I think I've talked long enough about my concerns with uh, <laughs> Frontline. But it's, it's still early. It's still, I bet you, two years out. Most likely, yeah. We might get an early access kind of thing, but yeah. it's hard to judge based on those. I thought so, too. Okay, you ready, Scott? Topic number three for the show. <laughs> uh, 15 <laughs> minutes in. It's Halo Infinite options and new Xbox store features lead the latest Xbox accessibility push. This is Austin Woods over at Games Radar. New accessibility features, including store filters, are coming to Xbox, and Halo Infinite is among the games putting them to work. Xbox outlines the latest access, uh, accessibility developments in a recent showcase, which was post, uh, post uh, man, positioned as a celebration <laughs> for National Disability Employment Awareness Month. So they actually, they waited for this month to arrive in order to post this, which I thought was awesome. The headliner is a new storefront uh, feature, meta filters that allow developers to flag their titles with specific accessibility features so consumers can know before they purchase or download, according to Brandon Zahan, Senior Gaming Accessibility Program Manager. Basically what's going on, it's guys, when you go to the store now, you will be able to see what accessibility features you will encounter or have the ability to access when you purchase the game. Okay. Color well, in one, of, right? in one of the more minor uh, afflictions, I have a friend that's very colorblind. Yeah. So this, uh, I'm hoping there's some sort of flagging for that because some of his games that he gets into, it's you know, or the difference between orange and red is really hard to see. Green and blue, it's still really hard to see. So that's just one concern. Sure. Sahan so says Xbox has targeted 20 common accessibility features to start, including oh. narrated game menus, subtitle options, inputting. Input remapping, full keyboard support, single click gameplay, and many more. Dude, this is awesome. Xbox always thinking forward and thinking about everybody, right? Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with trying to get everybody included. And yeah. they waited for this month, but it's special. It's to show that they're doing something for that community. And I think that community is hopefully going to respond very well because, I mean, that's the idea behind this. You don't have to look through a bunch of games put some money down and then realize that it's just not going to work. Absolutely. Scott, how do you like the price of two games for just one price actually? Cause that's what Battlefield's doing with battlefield 2042 $70 oh. standard edition on PS five and Xbox series X and S now includes last gen version, two games, one oh, okay. price. We talked about this recently too, with PlayStation. If you want to upgrade to the PS five version, you have to pay an extra $10. Yeah, that didn't sit right. well with most people, I don't think. No, we just received NBA 2K. Dude, we got both versions. We can put it on last gen oh, and nice. next gen. And that's what EA here is doing as well. EA is bringing back the dual entitlement program for Battlefield 2042 and will now be available in the game's most basic edition. This comes from Sharif Saheed over at VG247. DICE announced a major change in the content of the digital standard edition for Battlefield 2042 for PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. The $70 edition now also comes with access to the PS4 and Xbox One versions alongside the main game on new consoles at no additional charge. I think that's the biggest thing right there. Previously, yeah. the cross-gen bundle was only included in Battlefield 2042's $100 Gold or $120 Ultimate Editions. So you actually had to get the better versions or the more expensive versions in order to have access to both. Well, I think when you take the amount of people that are going to put money on that, there is some profit to be made off of that. Uh, yeah, that of makes course. sense. But uh, to sacrifice that to be 
you know, kind of the the, the good guy in the room and yeah. bring you this game in both versions. I think that's much more valuable. Absolutely. That's what we said. We talked about how PlayStation was looking at how do they do this and kind of tap in your wallet a little bit. They have a $10 charge, right, to upgrade from PS4 to PS5. Here, you just buy one version of the game and you get two versions of the game, right? And that's that's uh, consumer-friendly, Scott, which is yeah not often seen especially as of lately right like a lot of it just seems to be their hands out dude and they just want more and more and more right and i have to say this this is from ea let's keep that in mind well let's not lose sight of that i was gonna say that too but either way this effectively means (laughs) players who intend to buy on buying a ps5 or xbox series x should feel comfortable getting the standard edition on those storefronts seeing it as will grant them access to the game on both generations for the console family of choice so even if you buy on ps4 or the xbox one right now because you can't find a console like we just that's talked about exactly yesterday what I was say. yeah right? that's an issue so. well exactly because we touched on it yesterday the fact that xbox series x is still gonna be in shortage until 2022 yeah uh, so <laughs> and i think our guess is 23 is what that actually well, means. <laughs> right nobody knows for sure right not, now. Nobody, nobody really knows but that's where we're kind of at right now is everybody is looking to upgrade just can't because they can't find a console and if they do they like we said yesterday they struck gold so you should pick it up as yeah. soon as you can because there are a lot of new features especially on i'm gonna say dude if you compare ps5 to xbox series x i feel like there's a lot more features on the ps5 just because of the dual sense controller it's just, i knew uh, you were gonna say that uh, controller uh, <laughs> and i you know hoping that's the next thing xbox picks up well, <laughs> Phil Spencer even touched on that, that he likes what PlayStation's done with the controller, and they should maybe kind of look at implementing some of those changes into their next controllers. So maybe yes, we get like a, an Xbox Series 3 Elite controller, <laughs> maybe, right? Something like that is kind of where I'm thinking you get into some of this haptic feedback, because, dude, it is really, really oh. cool. I want to hear I want to hear the bass in the Chief's voice when he says, no. it's time to finish the fight. Nah. I want that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm playing Kina Bridge of Spirits right now, and she's a bow and arrow, right? And as you pull back the bow and arrow, oh, that's awesome. Dude, the trigger, you can feel the tension build in the trigger as I go. And so when I played Returnal, <laughs> you could go halfway and then all the way. And I kind of, and Ratchet and Clank was the same thing. Ratchet and Clank ripped apart halfway and then all the way would release another function, right? Well, with Kina Bridge of Spirits, because it's a bow and arrow, as you pull, you build that tension in the trigger. It is a game changer i know it seems simple but dude what a huge difference that is it's super cool well because we've played vr we kind of have already stretched like more of any yeah. of the novelties that sure. you could go in innovating but this is it seems to go beyond novelty <clears throat> and uh, if we're on vr just to we kind of have that sense of what you can do but this yeah. gives everybody the chance to have that force feedback i can't really think of much more to do after that unless there's a a mist and a fan that's going to blast <laughs> mist into your face while you're Get playing smell. where else are you going to go with this yeah Dude. oh that'd be lost on me that'd be unfortunate <laughs> walk by a dumpster in your open world and he's like whoa uh, i'm okay to skip those but <laughs> <laughs> but dude okay well then playstation 2 though right with the psvr 2 is bringing haptic feedback into that so now when That's we awesome. do play in vr we're going to get that haptic feedback functionality as well and we've seen some companies actually go out and build in like chest uh suits you kind of put on and you get that interactive as well but scott we're getting late <laughs> to show dude what games are coming out for today well, we have a uh, <laughs> buckle up. This is a very long <laughs> list here. <laughs> we have the Art of Rally, and that is on PlayStation Four and Five. And that's but it. That is all, dude. That's a that's a short list today. That's uh... <laughs> very hit and miss nowadays. Some days it's a dozen long. Well, it's typical. Typically, Mondays are like nothing, which is weird. And then all of a sudden, Tuesday hits, and we have ten games we're, we're ta- talking about. Right? It's just like it goes on and on, and then it kind of sporadic throughout the rest of the week sometimes. And then other times, by the time you hit the end of the week, you're nailed twenty games. Just, man, there's always something new and exciting to play. But there's oh, yeah. there's that. Check out Far Cry. <laughs> all right, buddy. <laughs> that's gonna wrap up today's show. Everybody, as always. Thank you for hanging out with us. This is ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news. You can catch us over at InsideTheGame.ca, podcast services and TV streaming networks around the globe. Of course, I'm Drew. That's Scott. We'll see everybody tomorrow inside the game.